And welcome back as we come to our second segment in this Conversations on COVID-19 program. And joining us now is Rich Schrader, the general manager of the Rusty Rail in Mifflinburg. And Rich, I imagine this has been an extraordinarily uh, trying time for you as it has been for just about every other restaurant in the Valley. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely not something we had in our plans going into you know, the first quarter of this year and things were moving along really, really well for us and I'm sure for a lot of people. So, you know, when this happened, it was a big shock to everybody. How, what was your reaction uh, back on, back in early March when uh, things started to head south? Um, you know, I think it was a matter of understanding the severity of it. Um, as the news started to come in, we wanted to make sure we were reacting um, appropriately. And because it, it was happening so fast, I think that it was um, it was difficult to react uh, as quickly as you'd like to and trying to gather as much information as we possibly could as fast as we could to make good decisions. Um, I think that was the hardest thing. And, um, you know, like I said, everything just happened so quickly that we were just trying to react as quickly as we could to it. But um, I think everybody did a great job. And, and once we started to understand and everyone else started to understand the severity of it, we acted quickly. So what were some of the immediate moves you guys had to make? Um, I mean, you know, initially, uh, you know, obviously restaurant uh, taproom side, you know, we're a brewery primarily first, you know, and the wholesale uh, manufacturing side of our brewery was something that we had to address right away and see what, what restrictions we were going to have from being able to operate and, um, and doing those things. The taproom, because of the size of our taproom and our event facility, um, we had to take a look at that quickly because the public gathering side of things was something that changed very fast. So we had to notify our staff, um, look at our scheduling, um, adjust our scheduling. And it happened so quickly, we went from, you know, scaled back significantly to shut down basically um, beyond even a carry out type scenario once the um, stay at home order came through. So it all happened very quickly. Um, Chris, yeah. So what I imagine you do, do you get into the restaurant at all, restaurant taproot at all now? And you said your last day uh, was when we were talking before this, that was uh, St. Patrick's Day. So what is it like walking in there now? It's practically, em it's empty, isn't it? Yeah, I know. We've been doing a very limited carry out beer sales on Saturdays. Um, and then for a couple of weeks, we did the carry out food between that period of time I told you about um, in the middle of March there to the end of April. Um, but um, once we did the, uh, the, once the governor sent out the stay at home order, we, we shut down all of the dine in operations and the carry out operations. And um, we started doing the takeout beer. But, you know, I, I always go in and you know, check the mail, um, make sure that, that nothing's broken or, or you know, um, things that we may not be there to see. But walking in that huge building and, you know, just the environment, because it is such an experience going there and not seeing all the people and the staff and the social interaction and all of the vibe and the environment of it. it it's, it's sad, you know, and I've spent my last five, seven years of my career building that place with the owners. Um, and it's really, I sent messages out to our team just telling them how, you know, how much we miss them and, and how sad it is to not be able to come in and see that energy and that experience every day. Yeah, I'm sure for a general manager, one a great thing is hiring people. The worst thing is perhaps furloughing people, which you had to do. Yeah, absolutely. And we had a, over 100 employees, you know, close to 130 employees part time and full time and a big part of our community. And we take pride in that. And, um, you know, it's something for me, you know, there's it, a lot of satisfaction in that being able to bring jobs to the community. And as you just said, having to almost overnight, you know, eliminate those jobs for the temporarily and not understanding the future is also, you know, it's one thing if you know what the situation is and exactly how long you're going to be dealing with this, but it's another when you have an idea, well, maybe this will go to the 15th, right? And then, oh, well, wait, no, we're not nearly out of the woods yet we're going to extend this to this period of time. And even with that, there's still a lot of contingencies. So it's um, like every business owner, I'm sure right now is very, very hard to try to understand future scheduling, future um, returns for people, uh, what those hours are going to look like. 
you know, I imagine every restaurant owner in the Valley is probably trying to figure out how they're going to, when the restrictions are lifted, how they're going to schedule their people and how they're going to determine who comes back first and in what order and things of that nature too. Yeah. And, uh, tomorrow, this, uh, is tomorrow, Friday, May 8th, um, is when we go to yellow. Do you have a, a firm grasp of how that affects you? Um, I mean, I feel we're going to stay in the carryout mode. Now, we haven't been doing carryout. Um, we've been working on getting ready to do that again as far as the food goes. Um, you know, our brewery operations will continue as usual. There really won't be much of an impact on that. It'll just be a matter of um, adding staff if needed for additional business. And, and, you know, hopefully that's what happens. Um, as far as the tap room and the restaurant goes and the events, um, you know, preparing for that in the, in, we don't have a lot of information on the big, the big thing we're waiting on is to understand what our seating capacity. I think most dine-in facilities are going to be waiting for that. Um, what is the seating capacity, whether it's a percentage of your overall seating or, um, you know, of the capacity or whatever it is, understanding that so that you can start preparing as far as, um, the setup of the, of the restaurant itself. So, I think there's enough guidelines to get pretty well prepared from a safety standpoint of staff and the public. I think understanding the six foot distancing, um, there's some questions still out there on group sizes for tables, uh, whether you'll be allowed to have groups of 10, groups of eight, six, whatever that might be. And then understanding that spacing between the tables and things like that so we can prepare. We'll be well, we'll be well, well prepared with PPE, uh, protection equipment, whatever is needed. We obviously know there'll be masks, gloves, disinfectants, sanitizer, everybody will be on uh, high alert, constantly making sure that we're making it as um, safe and comfortable for people in that experience as possible. You guys made a, a conscious decision on April 1st when the stay-at-home orders came down to, to just shut down totally. And I imagine that was out of safety, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, our owners, um, you know, Paul and Eric John, their number one priority is the safety of their employees. Um, we don't want to take a chance with that. Um, and then because there was not a lot of information out there, the best thing to do until we figured it all out was to just make that move. So when, uh, you guys do start to ramp back up the, uh, carry out, how do you decide, how do you go about deciding what food to make, um, along um, those Well, our chef, our, our executive chef, Marco uh, Romano has uh, taken a lot of time to put together a menu that he felt could be executed by um, a, a limited staff with flexibility, but also give enough options for people to feel as though their whole family can enjoy it. So, you know, we felt like 10 to 12, 15 items um, to start out with would be enough to um, hit a variety of things, whether it's sandwiches and salads, appetizers, a few entrees, things like that. So it's a delicate balance. Um, you want to protect your inventories and make sure that you're not overstocking in case the flow of business maybe isn't what you thought it might be. Um, but, um, I feel we can comfortably do that. We've been, uh, we've been doing this for, you know, five years now. I feel like we're in a pretty comfortable place to, uh, scale up or down either way. Now, um, you guys also had the brewery running still, oh, yeah. it kept going. How, how do you, how do you do that during uh, a crisis like this? Well, the good news about the brewing side of things and in, in, in the facility that we have is, is very large. Um, so it's spread out pretty far. Now, sometimes that can make it difficult because of staying efficient. But at times like this, it actually makes it quite um, beneficial because of the ability to distance. And so, you know, it, you, know you can scale back pretty significantly and have a, um, a lead brewer, a sellerman, and a packaging person and, um, and have them spread, spread apart very far, far further than the six feet. Um, which makes it much, much easier to manage. And of course, you know, using the additional protection um, needed to make sure everybody is safe with masks and gloves and, and, and sanitation and things of that nature. But I think our size gives us an advantage that way to try to operate as safe as possible. Now, the other aspect of your business is your rather large, amazing banquet hall. Um, yeah. That had to be shut down as well. And I'm sure that affected a lot of people, uh, people's plans. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our event director and our wedding planner have been working tirelessly with brides to, um, you know, we were on pace to have a really amazing year, um, close to 40 weddings. And, you know, um, 
just trying to, you know, went from, oh, well, we, we'll reschedule into August, then we'll reschedule into September. Now, you know, some of it's, well, let's reschedule into 2021. But a lot of them that are rescheduling the, the couples are um, being very flexible with their numbers. And they have been great. All of our customers, clients that we're working with right now have been great on just being flexible and working with our, um, with our management on future dates. And rather than canceling things altogether, maybe scale back the size a little bit, you know, cut your guest list down a little bit, but you know, let's still do this and let's, let's try to look for dates. You know, we're looking at things we never looked at before. Um, weekday weddings, for instance, you know, nobody would have considered a weekday wedding before. Now they are, um, wedding, two weddings in a single day and, um, you know, understanding how to flip those rooms and get things ready, uh, to go. Um, just, you know, probably going to add a little more staff when the time comes, we'll be doing more business with smaller groups and, um, we'll just have to make sure our timing is really well done really well and that our processes are extremely efficient. Yeah. A term that's going around a lot these days is the new normal. And that might be the new normal for you guys for a while. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think so. I think it's going to change the way everybody looks at their um, scheduling of events and things like that, because at least for the you know foreseeable future, they're gonna we're going to run out of days of the week, and and certainly going to run out of weekends once things come back. Now, Rich, uh, another aspect of your business, and a lot of businesses throughout the area have moved in this direction, is outdoor seating. So, do you know yet how this is going to affect that? No, um, I've been doing some research, and um, I've been looking at what other states have been doing, and. It looks as though some states are treating it differently than the indoor seating, and um, they're allowing outdoor seating, but then a percentage of in indoor seating based on the size and occupancy, square footage, things of that nature. Um, we have um, a very nice patio area with um, with some decent seating out there. It is picnic picnic table style, so um, with keeping the six foot um, requirements between groups, um, we may not be able to seat quite as many out there, but we're excited to be able to get that open and be able to see people out there because as the weather breaks we have the um the rail trail as you know right behind us um, from Mifflinburg to Lewisburg so a lot of traffic on that and a lot of people cyclists hikers walkers um, a lot of people are chomping at the bit to be able to come up and dine in that area how are you rich doing with this situation personally uh, personally, I'm staying busy, um, you know, doing what I can to make sure I'm staying active, um, exercise, like a lot of people working on my house at home, um, you know, stay reading a lot, trying to stay on top of everything that is uh, happening every day so that as we move forward, you know, from my career standpoint and Rusty Rail is, you know, as much a, a lifestyle for me as it is my career, just making sure I'm staying on the industry, on top of the industry and everything that's going on so that I'm well prepared for wherever this is headed. And um, I'm doing well, though, you know, I mean, the time that I'm getting to spend with my uh, with my son, and the time that I'm getting to spend to work on my my personal health a little bit. Um, obviously, it's tragic, all the things that are happening out there and all the, the loved ones that have been lost and people that are losing loved ones. But, um, you know, uh, me personally, I'm trying to make the best of it and, and do as much personal improvement as I can. Well said. Rich Schrader, the general manager of Rusty Rail in Mifflinburg. Rich, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, Chris. Stay safe. You too as well. And uh, that's going to do it for this episode of In Your Neighborhood special series, Conversations on COVID-19. I'm your host, Chris O'Rourke. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon and stay safe out there.